Right, we've done Tony Blair before, but my point is that if you have somebody of this quality who's helped set up the child system, which he did, we can expect it to be corrupt, can't we? If we have people like this, Father Christmas, yeah, this is what these people think of themselves. The Lord Chief Justice dressed up as Father Christmas with Jack Straw, who in his student days was not a nice man, as far as I know. So what do we expect of the system that these people created? What do we expect of this man who was looking after the Department for Education, Families and Schools? He's a member of a club which was started by the Nazi party. He spends public money on travel when he's not supposed to do that. We have the evidence. So the man's lying. Here's one of the letters about it to prove what I'm saying is true. What about this lady? Yeah, deputy leader of the Labour Party who whilst she was involved with Liberty or the National, um, I've forgotten what it was now, but pre-Liberty, it had a different name, National Council for Civil Liberties, she was campaigning that pornographic photographs of children, well, that was okay. What do we expect from a system in Parliament that has got these people as not only MPs, but senior people? This is the reason that why you go to the MPs, nothing happens, because the corruption is not only in the judiciary and the courts, as Mr. Hemming has already told us, the corruption is in Parliament. Harriet Harman has got time to try and remove sites about escorts in London, and who does she go to? Her friend Schwarzenegger. Amazing, she can't deal with child abuse in her own country. And here they are, such a lovely, nice family couple, but they're not. Because in the papers, it was revealed through the Daily Mail that this man, who is an arms dealer, donated £15,000 to Cameron's Personal Leadership Fund. They also gave £130,000 to the Tory party. And the lady here, so this is husband and wife, and Anita ran the art ex exhibition which had Christ with an erection. So when we look at David Cameron, our Prime Minister, and find that he's not interested in the, in the abuse of children, the reason becomes very clear. These people are despicable hypocrites. And to say that we are going to be treating Parliament with calmness and respect is an insult to our intelligence. Here is the education site. What should we do if we're concerned about a child's safety? The advice is go somewhere else. That's what this site says, go somewhere else. Here he is, Mr. Gove. Now what I'm going to say to you, as I give you about five slides in no time at all, these are the people we are going to target. We're not going to use violence, we're not going to threaten them, we are simply going to bring them into the spotlight and ask them to do their job. And if they don't do their job, they are going to be brought to the courts, but the courts are not going to be the corrupt state courts, they're going to be the people's courts. And I can tell you this is already starting to happen. Here's another man, Mr. Gibb. He's, he, what's he interested in in schools? International policy. They can't sort out inner city schools, but they're looking at international policy. And here is a very interesting lady. She's a bit sweaty. She put the makeup on, but you're still sweating, darling. And she's going to be sweating a lot more because basically she's now saying that 50,000 parents should receive parenting classes. And do you know what the parenting classes are going to be based on? NLP. NLP. Neuro Linguistic Programming. There we are. Free parenting classes. Now, I was going to give you information about Bridge End. We've run out of time. 
but if you'll stick with me and we can do another session, I'm going to explain to you exactly how they have been messing with the heads of people in social services, children's services, and the police. And we know what we're talking about is real because we have the evidence and we've now got professionals coming to us very worried because their colleagues are not acting normally. Tim Lawton, well, he is a wonderful man. Kafkas, he's in charge of, so we know what he's up to. Lord Hill, can anybody explain to me why this man was made a lord? Because I can't find any reason for it. Now look, I'm going to stick up for this guy because I look a bit like a hamster myself at the moment, all right? So this hasn't been chosen to take the mickey out of the man because of what he looks like. I chose this because it's the only photograph there is of him. But also it says that he's part of the conservative Christian fellowship. So now that he knows that Mr. Cameron has been personally supported by somebody who's prepared to put Christ with an erection, I'm going to ask when this man is going to resign from the Tory party. And I hope other people are going to help me, uh, me to ask him. Here's the education board. These are the people we need to go for. When I phoned up to get their job descriptions, do you know what they said? Who are you? Why do you want to know? What are you doing? Uh, 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 we, we'll email it to you. Well, they haven't emailed it to me because they're hiding. So we're going to dig these people out of their little holes. Here's an interesting lady. She's the chair of the parliamentary group on missing children. 200,000 adults go missing in this country every year. 80% return. Roughly 40% don't. Sorry, that's persons go missing. 40% don't. So roughly... I <laughs> did that wrong. 20% don't. That's roughly 40,000 people, of which two-thirds are children. They are never seen again. And this is what the, the policeman in charge of it in ACPO says, significant amount of clutter, it's disorganized, we don't know what's happening. I'll tell you why they don't know what's happening, because if we knew where the children were going, the scam would be open. Right? Politicians are covering up the abuse of children. It's blatant. Here is a lady in South Wales called Julie Reznicek. She's been in the paper recently because she's recruiting foreign social workers. We think we've got enough trouble with the British ones, but you've got big problems coming because we're going to have foreign ones. And here's the proof. They're going to include Romanians, Portuguese, Hungarian, German. Well, they do. This is internationalism because the children are going to be the property of the state. And I'm going to say very nicely to Mr. Hemming, and I've given him lots of support for coming today. I'm very impressed. But Mr. Hemming, you need to start understanding what the real policies are going through Parliament. These people, some of them are working to help people, I know. Some of them are working to destroy people, I know. Destroy. And they are particularly interested in children. I'm only giving you an overview. I'll prove it to you. This is one psychologist recommended by Shropshire County Council. Her name's McQueen. When we did some research on her, she was a member of this, it's almost a cult called Munai Key. And the man who run, runs the cult, called Alberto Velodo, is the center of considerable controversy because he believes that human beings are parasites on the world. So Shropshire County Council accuses a mother of being mentally deficient and the clinical psychologist they recommend to write a report on her has done the rights for Munai Key. As John Harris would say, these people are having a laugh. Well, he might say something else. Kafkas, we've done. This man, Colonel Reese Rawlings, who helped set up 
World Mental Health through the United Nations, says in a document dated, I've got to read it off the screen here, October 1943, we have made a useful attack on a number of professions. The two easiest of them are the teaching profession and the church. Well done, Cameron. The most difficult will be law and medicine. It's already been done. They're into law and medicine. And he advocated that if you weren't a psychiatrist yourself, you weren't normal. Now, I've got some stuff which I can't give you because I haven't got time, but this is um, the BBC website, and if you go on it, you will find an audio clip where they have gone into the cabinet office nudge unit. What is that? It is the inner sanctum of the applied psychology unit. We have exposed this in the UK column in great detail. They are actively using NLP and applied psychology on people in public services. They have set up applied psychology cells in every department and they have been told, and we have the documentation which says it, they are to change the views and values of the people in the departments before they are unleashed to change our views and values. And the techniques they are using, you will not know it's being used on you. If you can do that with an adult, just think what a grubby little child abuser could do with a child. So when you meet a children's services person or social services person and you say this person is not acting normally because that's what I've got people describing to me very accurately, they're not acting normally because they are not in their right minds. Over 40 young people have committed suicide in South Wales and we can show that at every level they are being given doses of neuro-linguistic programming. Why am I so confident? Because I have got NLP experts who've come to us because they are so frightened at what they've discovered about the use of NLP for political purposes. I'm going to end on that. You can research NLP yourself, but I will say to you, if we're going to stop the child abuse, we've got to get the rest of this picture out, which is the people handling the children are themselves victims because they've had their minds interfered with. Okay, we have the evidence. Now the next thing we've got to do is get the groups working together properly. We won't all get on all of the time. But if you're interested in us and the fact we've had this conference, we are not going to be pussyfooting around with politicians and judges and the police. We are coming for you. Okay? It's just a quick question, really. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier on about we're going to take them to the people's court or the, the open court, whatever. What court are we going to take them to if they own them all? If they own them all? There's not a court in the land that they don't own. Uh, well, you're absolutely correct. They own all the courts, which is why the courts are corrupt. But under common law, which is the basis of law in this country, when the government is acting unlawfully themselves, people are entitled to set up their own courts. That's part of our constitution. It is part of our constitution. And I've got to say, the British Constitution Group has been explaining this. We've done the research, we know the history, we know the laws, we know common law, and we have already started down the path of setting up our own courts. That's not British Constitution Group courts, that's your courts. And we are also starting to recruit um, peace officers who are people who will take necessary action when corrupt police officers will not take action. So what you can expect to see are the people who are criminals causing you and myself problems
being summoned to very different courts than they've been summoned to before. They're